were clearer in our minds what a democracy looked like and the rules of all of us and why we needed freedom of speech and all the media freedoms. Um, at this point, we seem to have lost our sense of direction. So when we talk about the clamping down on freedom of expression and press freedoms, we tend to focus on the use of state power um, against either journalists or citizens who have criticized the state or said something the state doesn't like. And that is a, that is a key issue, it's a problem. And I think what we're seeing now is if you read the stories that we see that are reported and you take out the dates and just deal with what is happening, it's, it's very confusing because it's very similar to the stories we had in the uh, military, when we were under military dictatorships and that's why we're all concerned. So now, if, if I spoke here today and tomorrow I put out that I had been harassed subsequent to this event, even if it was not true, most people would believe me because of the culture we have, we, we find ourselves in right now. And it's not just the current one. There are instances in all the um, regimes under the Fourth Republican Constitution. The issue now is that when you add media plurality, which we have corrupted, rather than it being a vehicle for increasing our freedoms. We have allowed um, politicians to hijack the ownership of the media houses. And so the plurality of the media houses has now become another tool, either for attack or for suppression of press freedoms. And it's not held by the fact that security agencies are involved in suppression, so for instance, the police can say that you can prophesy if you're a pastor, but do not cause fear and panic. Who decides what is fear and panic? Are we now going to use the reasonable man test in a criminal matter? And even more worrying is the use of the tool of criminal law to fight cases of defamation, especially when the people who are allegedly defamed uh, political party, um, well, politicians.